Hi friends, welcome back to Sunday School. Today I have my super helper, Aniston, here to do Sunday School with us. Well, I want you to think about someone special, someone that makes you feel so good and so special when you're with them. Who's that person for you? Grandma. Grandma, who's that person for you? These people are such a treasure, and they gave us a treasure by giving us their time and making us feel so good. Today, we're going to learn about a man in the Bible, and he gave his time to God, and he did something so big that people didn't even think it was possible. Well, our Bible story is in the front of the Bible, and that is the Old Testament, and it's under Nehemiah, and I put a bookmark in here in Nehemiah 2. So this book, Nehemiah, it's not in all of my picture Bibles and I had to find a special Bible for it to be in. Nehemiah was a man who was inspired to do something for God. Something terrible had happened in his hometown and he just couldn't sit by and watch and let it happen. Let's see what Nehemiah did. I'm going to read our picture Bible for you. Today our story comes from the Bible called Friends with God Story Bible, Why God Loves People Like Me, written by Jeff White, illustrated by David Harrington. The story is called Up Against the Wall. It's from Nehemiah 3 through 4, 6. And the cool thing about this story It's written as if Nehemiah were telling the story to you. So when you're listening, picture him as the storyteller. We had returned to Jerusalem. We had rebuilt God's temple. Now it was time to give our home some protection. Cities in our time needed walls to protect us from our enemies. Unfortunately, we had a lot of enemies. Fortunately, God was not one of them. God was our friend. The wall around Jerusalem had been destroyed and burned long time ago. So we put different groups of people to work on sections of the wall and its gates. It was a big job. It wasn't easy and our enemies didn't like it. In fact, they were mad. They mocked us saying stuff like, that wall would fall over even if a fox was on top of it. Things got so bad that I placed armed guards all along the wall where people were working. If anyone attacked, we'd be ready. But even with the guards all around, I prayed that God would protect us. The longer we worked, the angrier our enemies became. They made up lies about us. They threatened to hurt us again and again. They even tried to lure me out of the city so that they could kill me. But we wouldn't be stopped. I wasn't afraid. After all, God was with us. Running away would show that I didn't trust God to protect us. Instead of bowing to our enemies, we kept right on working. We stayed faithful to God brick by brick, beam by beam, and nail by nail. Not only did God protect us, but God also helped us work fast too. We finished that wall in just 52 days. Imagine that! The entire wall rebuilt around the whole city of Jerusalem in less than two months. Thanks be to God. Now our enemies weren't angry. They were frightened. They could see that God was with us. I'm still amazed at how our people came together to finish that wall. Every time a little doubt or fear started to creep in, we'd remind each other that God was with us. When you know God is on your side, you can do a lot. You don't have to worry about being afraid or running away because God is with you every step of the way. They say time flies when you're having fun. Now, I wouldn't say that building a wall was fun, but time did fly by for us because we were focused on God. 
try my lesson. Do your best today to stay focused on God. There are a lot of things that can distract us, but take a minute here and there to remember that God is always with you. God is a true friend who will never leave you. From Nehemiah. Nehemiah was only one person, but when he committed to using his time for God, he led and inspired people to work alongside him. And together, with God's help, they accomplished something that others thought were impossible. They rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem, even while people all around them tried to discourage them, tried to tell them that they couldn't do it. God may not want us to build a city wall, but we can accomplish things just as great when we use our time for God. Nehemiah had a big job to do, and he asked all the people all around to help him rebuild the wall. So these people, they used their time to work together to complete this big project for God. When you do things for, that pleases God, that means you're using your time for God. So what I've done is I've made a wall back here on our board. Can you see our board? And I put some stuff in there. So I have been thinking with Aniston, what are things that we can do to use our time for God? What do you think? What can you do to use your time for God? Aniston, will you help us read some of these? Aniston is going to read us some of our suggestions to get you thinking of things that you can do to help God. Play with brother or sister. Oh, can you play with a brother or sister? Do you think that that makes God happy when you're getting along with your family? Help my friends feel happy. Oh, I bet you do that often, help your friends feel happy. Give a hug. Who can you give a hug? Is there somebody that might be sad that could use a hug from you? What else do you have, Aniston? Listen to my friends. Oh, listening. It's always good to be a good listener. Help my family. Oh, help my family. That is such a good one. I bet there's lots of things you can do to help your family. someone can you read a story to somebody maybe even a bible story so they can learn all about god's great big love clean my room oh that's a big one cleaning your room makes our house feel clean and all put together and it makes our family feel better when things are all picked up one more draw a picture for a friend Oh, draw a picture for a friend. Friends love it when we get things um, from them. Does your friend draw you pictures ever? Mm -hmm. And I bet you do the same for your friends. It's so good to do things for others. One thing that we can do um, to give freely is our time. And do you know how many minutes we have in a day? We have 1,440 minutes every single day. Let's see how long we can stand on one foot for a minute. Are you ready? Get up, if you're sitting down at home, get up, let's see. And I'm looking at our second hand, are you ready? Set, go. A minute sure does seem like a long time when you're doing something hard, doesn't it? On about at, 10 seconds. If you look at one thing, that's not moving, it helps. Got a pro tip from our professional Aniston over here. Oh, she's getting wiggly. We're <laughs> almost at 30 seconds. Oh, not even a minute. Minutes take a long time, huh? Here we go, five, four, three, two, one. Good job, good job everybody at home, and good job Aniston, that was hard. So a minute may be longer than you think. 
What can you do for God in just one minute? What do you think you could do? Mm. Cartwheel. You can do cartwheels? I did a hundred one time. You did do a hundred. What can you do for God in one minute? Maybe you can say a prayer or tell somebody something nice to make them feel good. What can you do in one minute for God? Because you have 1,440 of them in one day. So even if you just give God a minute of your time, that helps put God's love right close into your heart. And so you have it first and you can remember. Mm-hmm. Okay, for our next activity, you need a piece of paper. It can be a scrap paper and a red marker. Go get that and we'll go get ours. Well, we use our time in all kinds of different ways. Um, we want to try to use our time for God and to do things that please God. But sometimes we get distracted and things get in our way and we forget to put God first. But we can remember to stop and to be like Nehemiah. Nehemiah didn't let anybody distract him from building that wall. So we're going to do an activity. Okay, what I'm going to have you do is you're going to draw an octagon. Do you know what an octagon is? Yeah. What is it? It has. It's like a circle, but it has like corners on it. That was a great description. It is like a circle, but it has eight sides on it. So do the best that you can. It looks kind of like a stop sign. So I always start mine with a straight line and then I go down and down. So that's three. And then I go straight down from there. And then I do two more slanty ones on each side here and here. And then I just connect the bottom together. Like this. Perfect. And then for our activity, you have to color in your octagon as dark as you can. And we need it red. Now, what does this look like, this octagon? Stop sign. It does look like a stop sign. Once you have your octagon colored, you need to hold it close to your face. Okay? So you're going to hold it close to your face Ow, I about- I my face on accident. <laughs> See, I want you to hold it about three inches away from your face away from your eyes and I need you to stare straight at your stop sign. Don't look anywhere else until I tell you. Are you ready? Ready? Okay, and while you are looking at your octagon, oh, hold on, keep looking. Okay. Put it three inches closer. While you're looking at it, I'm going to give you examples of using your time for God while you stare at that octagon. So look real closely at it. You can volunteer to clean the yard around the house. You can write welcome cards for new kids at church. You can volunteer to help leaders on Sunday morning. You can read the Bible to who can't read quite yet. Nehemiah didn't stop giving his time to God, even when others wanted him to. Let's see what he did do. When I count to three, I'm gonna have you close your eyes and focus on what you see. It'll su probably surprise you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Close your eyes. And what do you see? I see it. What do you see? A green octagon. A green octagon? Is that what you guys see too? So when you're focusing on God, you don't get a red stop sign to tell you to stop. You get the green sign that means go, right? Just when you focused on the things that you can do for God, when you closed your eyes, you saw the green sign. That means go and do good for God. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. That's what we're gonna try to do this week is focus on what we can do to use our time wisely. All right, well, we're almost done. Let's say a prayer before we leave. God, please help us to be wise in how we use our time that you've given us. Help us to use our time for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us, my friends.